So today we're going to be talking about a certain magical index, the film, or the movie, which is called The Miracle of Endion. Endymion. I can't say it, but it's a really good film. So let's begin the review. So let's talk about what you get. The film is 1 hour and 30 minutes. Um, it comes with a standard film and then uh, the extras. So what you get on the kind of special features are the following. You get US commentary. It's kind of really interesting because I was listening to it and I was like, I kind of really want to watch this again. Now I've watched the film twice and I wholeheartedly enjoyed it. Um, you also get different trailers like US, uh, you get like the Japanese trailers and like different ones, um, which are really cool. I was kind of watching them over and going, I kind of dig this. I'm gonna kind of briefly tell you about the plot. I am gonna miss some things out because I don't wanna talk all about it. I just kind of really want you guys to experience it when you watch it uh, and I want you to tell me what you think about it. So first of all, the film opens up with a kind of space orbital plane that's above the atmosphere. Now you've got normal planes, this one will go into orbit and kind of like go over it, it's kind of like in space type-ish, um, but it opens up with that and it's on fire. The engine has gone and nobody knows why. The, and the pilot has got to land the plane. But at this point you see a girl kind of like singing and just kind of walking and everybody is freaking out. And you would do because you're crashing. It then switches to the plane landing on the actual tarmac and like uh, response teams around and the news report is saying that 88 people survived. You know, it's a full complement of crew, but it kind of makes makes you doubt that. It kind of makes you think, actually, is it? Because I don't think it is. So you see like kind of blood and the pilot's hat, and then when it switches to a memorial, I actually generally thought there was a huge cover-up, and even though it says like 88 people survived, I actually thought, I bet they all died. I bet they all died and that was it. Now the animation is exactly the same as the anime. There is no up tweaks, there is nothing else. Um, so it was quite nice that it wasn't like souped up polished um, that I could generally get into the film and feel like I've just watched the anime so I can watch the film and then kind of like go straight into it. Now we see that Toma and Index are kind of walking and one thing that I previously said in my other review is I hate the fact that Index is always thinking with her stomach. That's the whole thing and it irritated me. So when it opens up with this I was like, why? Why is that a thing? Ugh. So Index is saying that she's not eaten, that she thinks that it should be a crime, that you know, if you miss it, um, it's like you're not breathing or your uh, blood is pumping through your body. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Um, and I was like, okay. <sighs> so then they find out that there is a like a space orbital like lift, and Index has never seen it whatsoever. And you know, in, uh, Tom is like, no, 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 it was. And she's like, well, I've never seen it. And it shows you that kind of like quick flashbacks of what happened. And you're then going, okay, so maybe it was. I just didn't pay attention. I thought it was a building in the anime. So I'm kind of tempted to go back to those episodes and see if it actually is there or if the animators are just messing with me and going, haha, it's not actually there. Soon we switch to a girl. So she's starting to play like the piano and she's starting to sing. She is bringing in a crowd. And you kind of think, okay, it's cool. The, the music's quite nice and the melody is fine. We then come to Misaka, she is with her friends. I can't remember the one with the flowers in the hair, but then she speaks to Saturn, who is listening to a girl called Arissa, who is like one of the best singers. And Misaka knows who she is. She's like, oh, I know who that is. So when they start listening to the, the beat, Saturn and Misaka are sitting a little bit close. And oh God, I'm so glad this is just the only time you see this. Kuroku or Koaku joins in and she's on the window going, and she's really angry because she's got a black aura. And she's like, sissy, how could you? And everyone's like, uh, uh. Oh, it just, I didn't like it in the actual anime in Railgun and this really started to put a damper down. So when she teleports into the restaurant and she's like, only this will fix it. And she sits right in the middle and she does the kissy thing. It annoyed me that this didn't need to be in whatsoever. Misaka then lets out all the electricity and then blasts everything and people are also leaving before Misaka does this and it shows you that everybody is uncomfortable, including myself, watching this. So everyone then leaves um, and then we switch back to Toma and Index and they're actually talking to Arissa properly and she's explaining what's happened, what she's done, um, that she's got a big break coming through and she really loves to sing and she really likes bringing people together. Um, singing is her passion and everyone's like, oh, I, can, I can dig that. 
Arissa then picks up a phone and she's got an audition for the Space Orbital People, which is a company that we'll find out later on in the anime. Arissa is really happy that she's performing. She's singing for many people because that's her dream and she's amazing at it. She says that she has some sort of kind of weird power thing or like a calming effect that when she sings, everybody likes it and I can see why. With Arissa getting this like kind of audition and this kind of job, uh, Index invites Orissa to join her and Toma in eating because Toma has originally said I will buy you anything you can eat as much as you want and whatever it is and Index starts eating a lot and this is a thing where I was like oh god please don't be a thing again please it happened so Index is eating and eating where Toma and uh, Orissa are just just drinking tea or, or juice or whatever it is not doing much and you can see like people are rushing forward and back with all this food and Index is just eating and the bills get bigger and bigger in like the little cup. I thought that was quite funny and Tom going like, please stop. I really thought this was cool and it just, it just made me laugh and kind of made me think that Tom is just screwed pretty much. God damn Index eating all the food. After a while, Tom starts giving a pet talk um, and they're suddenly at the batting cage and they're all watching. And then it switches to three girls kind of looking over the city or something and they go straight in for an attack. Soon after that, uh, Toma has picked up all Orissa's things and Index and he start fighting. Orissa goes off, she starts uh, singing and humming and everybody's watching and Toma and Index follow to this like big massive battle arena which you think, I know what's coming, I know what that's for. Nice way to put a segue to actually put in the plot for a fight. As you kind of know, these three girls suddenly appear. They use earth, water, and air to kind of attack. So I quite like the elemental base. And then Styles, I think his name's Styles, he pops in with fire. And Tommy is kind of really confused. And he's like, why are you doing this? And saying, we need Arissa. She's our target. We need her. She's the one we want. Suddenly, as soon as you've got that, um, someone else joins in. And we find her name out later on is Chitara. Not to confuse with Chitara from Thundercats, but Chitara, but I'm gonna call her Chitara because it sounds like that. And Chitara is pretty much the spitting image of who I like to call Haru Suzumiya, but I can never, and this is a fact, I can never say Haru without saying Suzumiya properly, otherwise it just sounds like I've got cotton wool in my mouth. I'm like, rah, rah, rah. So Haru Suzumiya uh, look like, which I generally actually thought, ah, it could actually be her sister or something. She starts attacking, but she's more defending Arissa and she's going after Styles and the other girls and they're kind of just like sending out loads of like machines to kind of explosion and that's kind of her thing. And I really like the, the interface where she's using her eyes. As soon as she's got a target, her eyes kind of glow and like things explode. I kind of really like that. I thought it was really cool. She introduces herself as a special organized team, which I always forget, but that is the Civil Conflict and Resolution Squad or something like that, which has basically been set up for this city to stop all the sort of like hijinks happening, which is kind of long name. If you can say it like 10 times over really quickly, you guys are amazing. So we've got more talking, people disappear, and then suddenly Arissa is asleep. She dreams of what happened on the plane and you see a little bit more of what happened a long time ago. When she wakes up, she starts talking to Index and um, Toma and like explaining what's happening. And then they kind of have Arissa kind of stick about. We then have Chitara and someone talking. You don't know who the other person is at the moment, but you find out in the next couple of scenes. And then it goes to Toma at school saying, I can't sleep because I've got two girls staying at my place. So I have nowhere to stay and I have no blankets. So I'm gonna go sleep in a bathtub, which I kind of thought was quite funny. As Toma turns around to his teacher and says, hey, can I have a nap? Because the teacher asks, why you so tired? She says, nope, you gotta stay in remedial classes, which has a major thing going on for a little bit later on. We switch to Arissa and Index in the bath, actually talking about what happens and like their relationship. And poor Otama, he just walks in later because Arissa wants to write down a new song and she runs out naked and she starts writing and Index follows and just, Toma just walks in. Oh my God, he's like, and in his face, he's like, I know what's happening, but it was so worth it. We then switch to Miska and her friends with Arissa, and they're going up to the kind of audition that she's got. Um, they kind of like talk about the main bad guy, which is Lady Lady Lee, um, saying she's poisoned up, blah 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 blah. And then you meet her very very briefly. Um, everyone gets changed into new gear, and suddenly um, they all like think uh, Arissa is singing, and when Miska and all that are kind of like just standing, not knowing what to do. Thomas sees, Thomas then also sees Shitara. 
that follows her, they have a fight, not Tama and Chitara, but Chitara and some random guy just obliterate the whole car park, and then Tama is hurt. While all this is going on, everything outside is going crazy, and it's like, what? Soon after, we have a concert with Arissa, and I have to admit, the singing wasn't that great. I kind of think I would much prefer to watch this in Japanese. Uh, well, that segment anyway, it just, the, the the vocals didn't match up and it kind of felt a bit, eh. The main plot has begun, which is about the Orbital and Lady Lee. So they're getting ready to cast this massive big spell um, and they're saying like everything's in place ready for what's going on. Soon after, Arissa is kind of uh, like kind of abducted by the uh, magic people, uh, by Styles and his gang. And then suddenly that's when Shitara actually is like released out um, and actually goes after them and they have this like kind of small battle on the highway or on the roads and then uh, Chitara takes Arissa and is like yeah I'm gonna go take it back to my boss she's passed out um, so Chitara kind of like cheeses it away we get a tiny bit of backstory with Lady Lee and Chitara saying what actually happened and Chitara goes mental because she finds out what happens with her dad so she shoots Lady Lee multiple times and Lady Lee's like I am fine, I am 100% okay with this. Um, so it's kind of a, a little bit weird on that one, but you can see why. The orbital station is now open and boom, everybody is going up there. Lady Lee has asked Arissa for a, a favor, but you know she's being blackmailed and she basically wants her to sing. They have a little bit of back and forth until Arissa agrees to actually go on and sing. So she starts singing in front of everybody um, Toma has been injured really badly and so he's in the hospital. Um, you've got then the guy who calls him Kami, I can't remember his name, and then you have Styles talking about what's happening, that it's all magical, blah 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 blah, and then uh, they say that they've got him some help, which you see Mini Miska, you see Accelerator, which I'm excited about, and then also you see the clones, the sisters of Miska, and then they all kind of gang together. Misaka, no, Misaka is like kind of left out, um, but she kind of figures out later on because she finds out what's happening. Um, you have Toma and Index going into space. Chitara has already spoken to her uh, bosses and she's been sent into space. Everyone goes up, waiting to go there. Now, when Index and Toma are into going into space, they see that, a, uh, that the spell has been activated and it's the biggest one. And they're using Earth to, as like a main focal point, which is kind of cool. Again, all the really cool designs are all actually awesome. While everybody's up there, Tommy and Index get a message from the Kami guy, or you know, the guy who calls Tommy Kami, and says, yeah, there's missiles everywhere. Woo! That's when they have a secret weapon, which is Konasuku. I think I said that right. She is really powerful. She just stops all the missiles. And yeah, she falls back to Earth. But you kind of think that she would have jumped back onto the, onto the shuttle and actually gone back in. But no, she's not. She falls something and is like, it's all about you now, you do it. So everyone is on the space station. The concert has kicked off already and everything is going to plan. Then we're now back on Earth. We find out that there is no way into getting into the orbital space station because it's all been sealed off and there's a big giant robot. So what happens, you have Miska and the annoying pink haired girl. Uh, she jumps in, she takes down the big robot, bam, 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 bam with a pink. And then she shoots her railgun like, Pow. They all now find out that the structure has these like kind of pivots or these uh, like these pillars and they don't they need to be let go otherwise the whole thing will crash down and everybody will be wiped out. So this is when everyone kind of bands together, they go inside, they're kind of waiting and you've got all these people. So you have uh, Misika, then you also have um, Skyle, Styles and his girls, and then also you have Accelerator and Mina Misika, as well as also the sisters that help them out. And I really like this entire battle scene. The only thing that I'll turn around and say that I didn't like was the fact is that they went three, two, and then Accelerator doesn't say anything. I'm like, he could have said, one really loudly and then just wrecked everything. Meanwhile, on the space station, Toma and Index split up. They go off and find stuff. This is when Toma finds Arissa and Chitara is actually kind of clambering in. She's going, I hate music, I hate music, girl. And she takes down Arissa or tries to. Meanwhile, Index has found Lady Lee. They start like talking about a few things and Lady Lee knows who Index is. So the final part is where Arissa and Chitara know that they are split. They figured out what happened on the plane and what was 
it all will happen. But if you want to know, you have to watch the film yourself. And as soon as that happens, they fuse together to become one person, and the kind of the, like the film almost ends there. We switch to the part where everyone is talking, and it's, it's coming to the end of the film. And you have the I think the main bad guy from Railgun or from Magical Index, and they're all talking about what Lady Lee was, and they say that Lady Lee can't die; she's immortal, and they've got her. So you know that that's going to be a thing for the next season or something very similar. And that's kind of it. It kind of like ends to the point where Toma and Index are talking and then they don't really see much. Um, and it just, just ends right there, which I'm, I'm kind of liking. Whew. So my final thoughts on this one is, this is how I think the anime, the series should have been. If this was a like the series, I would have been happy with this because it's one plot. So within that hour and 30 minutes, you get a lot of information but it's more followable. I could follow it more than I did with the anime because the anime was very confusing at times and the plots were just, just everywhere. I really like the fact that you saw all the characters. They were all very well balanced. And Lady Lee, you know, obviously you find, they all say she's 10, but actually she's over a thousand years. And it's like, dear God. And I really like the fact that Lady Lee turned around and multiple times said, well, I've been shot 37 times, but I've never been in the vacuum of space before. Those sorts of things kind of made me giggle and I was like, that's actually quite funny. In all, I highly recommend this anime. This to me was perfect balance. It didn't focus on a lot of other people and it focused on Index and Tommy a little bit more, but it also showed Index doing something rather than being lost, not having a phone, or just always eating. I really enjoyed this. This to me was really good and I highly recommend it. You know, even if you don't know the other characters, you soon pick up who they all are and you'll easily be able to follow it. Now, it is only one disc on Blu-ray and phew, it's all it needs. It's perfect. I like it. It's one maybe at the very bottom, but it's one of my like kind of favorite anime films. So Rangers, your question today is what do you think about this? Are you gonna get it? Are you not? What are your thoughts? Am I talking too quickly? Was this review okay? Let me know down below in the comments. And if you've liked this video, like, favorite, comment, and subscribe to check out all the other videos on the channel. And as always, Rangers, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a bit.